Yes, I'm joining in. Hey, hey, hey. So yes, I was a fan of Ruby from volume one to volume four. I watched the show religiously, to which then I dropped it and just randomly binge the next volumes or just watch other people's reviews of individual volumes or episodes. I was a giant fan of Rooster Teeth from often quoting Red and Blue, Rage Quit, and their other shows, and when the Red trailer dropped, I was ecstatic. I showed all of my friends each trailer, picked my favorite characters, and hopped into the show. I was an anime fan, still am to this day, so of course seeing one of my favorite YouTubers at the time making an anime piqued my interest as someone who wanted to make their own stories, and now I look back on it, and I miss only having the trailers to go off of. Because now, with Volume 8 rolling around, I can confirm that Ruby isn't that good. It's a passion project, and a well-loved one by the late Monty Um. He was, he was and still is an amazing man and animator, and this show must mean a lot to Rooster Teeth because it was his dream. And in that sense, I respect Rooster Teeth for that, continuing the dream of their friend. It makes his legacy continue on, even past his own life, and that's what I want to happen to me. But it is an excuse that the show is kind of mediocre now. It's not good, and it's because of the titular main team. Team Ruby. I will go through each character individually and talk about my problems with each of them. And who better to start off with than our lovely protagonist, Ruby Rose. Ruby Rose is our main character who doesn't act like a main character. She isn't very much engaging in the personality department and in the watching her fight department, it has gone down quite a bit as well. Ruby over the years slowly just became the archetypal gotta say my hero speech and then use my dead sex machina powers when convenient. Now, no, I'm not saying there is no depth in Ruby. Hell, I can make see loads of potentials in her character, make her a bit more awkward, doubling down on the needing weapons thing, push how much she doesn't like people further, keep her hand-to-hand -hand combat weakness and overall flowery view of the world, slowly break her down to a more confident strategic leader, a dreamer with a more realistic view, and tries to be pragmatic. That would be an interesting arc to go through. And I can see that they are trying, but it isn't going very well. She hasn't really sacrificed anything. I mean, yes, Pyrrha is dead and Penny did die, but Pyrrha and Ruby barely talked and Pyrrha's death only furthered John's development. And Penny's death, as engaging as it was at the time and how Ruby seemed so affected by it, didn't seem to affect her as much as when reuniting and being together again all of their talks are just gags. Which is cute to a degree, but there is some serious shit going on. You are in a war right now. You really got nothing important to say to each other. But yes, Ruby is flat and not even the good shonen anime protagonist way where the development comes from their teammates. It's just, she's just bland. And I can only hope that Rusativ improves on her character in the future, gives her more of a bit more of a personality other than token dork. But hey. You have to start somewhere. Now, Weiss is best girl. Out of the main four, she is the most developed. She went from a spoiled bratty racist to a more caring, sisterly, loving advocate. She supports her teammates emotionally, and I think that's a wonderful character arc. Weiss has always interested me, though. Her trailer was the, has the best music out of the four, and her fighting style was the most unique to me. Too bad they changed that to make her a glorified summoner, but still, it doesn't take it away who Weiss was. Yes, she isn't perfect. She doesn't really need to work for the answers that she gets. Her mom literally gives her everything she needs to arrest her father. But, you know, she's still well-rounded, <laughs> at least. She's more rounded than her teammates, anyway. I don't like her Volume 7 design, but, like, we're here talking about the characters, not about the designs. If I were to want to want to go deep into why I feel the designs are not that good in Volume 7, I could make a whole video about that, considering... My main art type is creating characters and I'm very picky. But back on Weiss's character. I feel like she has gone through a lot. I just wish that a lot of her image songs were not about the same thing. Like Mirror Mirror, Mirror Mirror Part 2 and This Life is Mine is all about, you know, being a lonely Snow White princess forced to follow her father's rule. Which, you know, I get. I get that that's her entire character for a while being oppressed by her father and not being able to be who she wants to be. But there's more to her and I feel like they should have spread out what her songs would be about. It's still good though and she's still a great character. I'm going on a tangent but yes, Weiss, best girl of the main four. Can we all appreciate that? Thank you. Oh Blake. Blake was always my least favorite from the main four. Her obviously very disconnected story with the white fang that, if done correctly, could be integrated in the main plot well, but since she's so disconnected from the plot with her own plot, she felt so much more 
distant from her team, which has affected her stance to me. And even though they prove that they can integrate a character's personal story into the main plot with Weiss, but it's because Blake's separated plot is already a big enough plot to carry its whole own show. Whenever we had to cut to Blake and Menagerie, it felt so different to me. I guess it's a good thing to really push the distance and the separation of the team at the time, but with Blake it did nothing for the main plot, just now the White Fang isn't an enemy type. Which I don't know if that was really needed in general. I don't know. I'm not here to rewrite the show just to talk about how I feel about the title characters. And as a storyteller, it just feels that Blake's disconnected plot was so unneeded and it just damaged her character for me instead of making her deeper like the writers wanted. Which, you know, as a woman of a minority, of a collection of minorities, you would think I would identify with Blake's story much more, considering that's the point of the White Fang, to show a connection to the real world about racism. Which, you know, I have mixed feelings on the White Fang being enemies in general, because, you know, fighting against um, repression is kind of a thing that's happening in real life, but like, I understand that they took it too far, that they were actually becoming, you know, criminals, so they had to be stopped. That's that's understandable, but I don't know. I feel like they could have handled it a little bit better. A little bit better. And all the whole Adam thing with Adam's going from actually caring about the White Fang to only caring about just getting back at Blake for breaking his heart, which kind of ruined his character. And let alone why Blake has so many love interests and I don't understand, it's just... I get it. I get it. I just, I just wish it was done better, I guess you can just say. And plus, another reason I don't really care for Blake connects to our titular Y, so. Now, Yang. Yang is my favorite character in the whole entire show. Now, yes, I know I said that Weiss is best girl, but Yang has always been my bias. I loved her. I loved her funny side. I loved her joking nature. I loved her fighting style. I loved, I loved her loving side. I could just see how much Monty loved video games. Cause in Yang's fighting style, I could see references to Hitomi's from Dead or Alive, who was my favorite character of Dead or Alive. And as a large Dead or Alive fan, I geeked out a little. <laughs> but then Yang's story was revealed and Yang has abandonment issues. And as someone with those very issues, I was instantly invested. I understood her drive, her want to know and understand then her position to Taking care of Ruby it only made a hit harder. Yang connected to me on such a deep level, and this was in volume two, when the show was still in its silly anime fighter school. But it was just what Yang represented and her potential as a character that got me. It gripped me. And then her arm got cut off. And when that happened, I was a fucking wreck. I love Yang and seeing her get hurt for her team like that, for someone who she really, really cared about, it was so in character. But Blake just upped and left, which is in character for Blake, and it's in character for Yang to feel angry and upset and bitter. Yang being angry for those multiple volumes for multiple years made me feel vindicated. I felt great that I was being told that it's okay to be pissed at someone who abandoned me. I knew they would make it up. I knew they would make up, but I was just happy that they didn't do a rush makeup. And then they did a rushed makeup for the sake of the ship, Bumblebee. Now, Yes, I used to ship Bumblebee. I used to think it was cute as fuck. But after Blake left Yang with her one arm, my personal experiences and beliefs just wouldn't let me ship it anymore. I can see Bumblebee and be fine. I don't anti-ship. I don't do that. But I just don't have the passion for it anymore. I wouldn't have minded Bumblebee getting together if they had a proper reconciliation. But they didn't. No talk, no blowing up, just awkward tension, Yang making it clear she's upset and then sudden Google eyes a couple episodes later. That's not how love works. I don't expect Yang to be angry at Blake forever, no. But for them to at least work through it. Not just get over it in time for making them canon and killing Adam. And let alone how they handled Yang and Raven. I liked how they first started with it, with Yang being cold and using Raven's words and values against her. That spiteful but pain nature, I loved it. And then the confrontation at the door, I felt nothing other than Yang just roasting her mom, which it didn't really hold any significance other than just to give Yang some pseudo win against her. It's a facade of some growth and, but her crying afterwards holding the relic made sense and she just was abandoned again. So it worked. I just, Yang leaves me with a lot of feeling. And as someone who has gone through her feelings of abandonment and just fear and just have her being shipped with someone with no reconciliation of that they abandon her, I can't, I 
hate it. I hate it so much as a storyteller and as a person who's been affected by these specific topics. Which is why I shipped Freezer Bird. Weiss was the only one who didn't leave her on her own accord. Best girls, yeah! Now we're at the point of the video where I wonder why I made it. Because I want Ruby to be a better show. But I feel at this point they're far too far in the story to change anything substantial. They can't without rethinking nearly anything, but I'm not talking about plot. I'm talking about the characters here, which can indeed slowly be built better. Ruby can be given more agency and unique personality other than token dork and leader. Weiss can work a bit harder for her goals and get her old violent style back. Blake can do more to atone for what she did and Yang can adequately show the proper feelings and emotions for the card she's been dealt. Now, no, I'm not going to do one of those things and rewrite the show. But those videos are genuinely entertaining to watch, and if you want a, and if you want a suggestion, I suggest Jerry Freeman's channel, just overall, because not only does he do good world building projects, he's just genuinely have good content. And for specific Ruby reviews, I would suggest Twins Inc. and The Judgmental Critter. My channel so far is literally me just screaming about my feelings on a piece of media that matters to me. So do not expect revolutionary scientific content. This is all opinionated, and just to start this discussion, I don't care about what you ship, as long as it isn't harmful. And I genuinely don't care about the characters you hate, this was just about my feelings on the main four of Ruby. And I feel like I needed to say this, just in case I get hit with the toxic Ruby community. Because I enjoyed the show, and I'm sure you all do too, because you wouldn't be here if you didn't. You can enjoy it to your heart's content. I more or less dropped it after volume 5, and I've just kind of been occasionally binging it whenever I feel like I need to catch up. I'm caught up. I'm just not passionate, and I haven't been since volume 4, so yeah. My final comment on this video. My thesis. The main character's rubies and their lack of development makes the show actively worse. Bite me on it.